19 away from 7 o'clock. Let's go to uh, Southwest Side. Donna, how are you? Hi. <laughs> I was calling in about Alfie's case, uh, which is so tragic and heartbreaking. Absolutely. Yeah, I wanted to let you know that I experienced a similar thing actually in Ohio about 17, well, my son will be 18 in the fall, um, years ago, where um, he needed, he was not responding to his IV nutrition in the NICU, and they said basically it shuts some people's livers down, and I called in a gastroenterologist from the same children's hospital to ask him, and he had been to a conference, and they found out that just turning off the, uh, it's called TPN or IV nutrition, for four hours a day could spare the liver, and they actually, our regular surgeon was on a vacation, and the team of doctors refused to do it. Um, they offered me pastoral and social worker services to come to terms with his death, uh, but they absolutely refused to just do a minor intervention that would save his life. And it took my surgeon, his surgeon coming back from uh, vacation, he was on his last hours, and he said, why wouldn't we do this? They turned it off, and within 24 hours, his liver enzymes were down, and he is still alive 18 years later. Donna, I, I got to ask you, what was, uh, I don't mean to be indelicate here, was this was this a publicly funded situation you were in in the hospital? It was private insurance. I worked for a Fortune 500 company at the time, and I... So the, even your own had- health care insurance in place, and they refused to give him the recommended treatment? Yes. It's about protocols, and that brings it, uh, some of this, not all of it, because certainly socialized and even medicine and universal health care has a play in determining whose life is worth saving. But it's saving, but sometimes pro hospital protocols, doctor power, you know, the balance of power is definitely shifted towards the medical end. Um, and actually, uh, consultant on Alfie's case that you might want to look into having on your show is Dr. Paul Burns who actually lives in Oregon, Ohio, and he's one of the neonatology pioneers in the whole country. And he travels to countries where they are trying to remove life support from patients that, whose families don't want that. Is so that he uh, B- B-Y-R-N-E? Is that burn? Is that what yes, you're saying? Okay. B-Y-R-N-E. And he's a NICU neonatal pioneer. Um, but yes, and Ohio has law on the books right now, a bill, HB 559, that would take all of the school-age vaccination exemptions through doctors. The Ohio AAP and other physician organizations are trying to make even religious exemptions go through them. So you have to see a doctor and be counseled. So it's, again, that medical grasp for power um, that needs to be balanced out by, you know, medical freedom and people making their own decisions, decisions for their children. Somewhere in my little fantasy world, Marcus Welby is still practicing. You know that? <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad. I mean, medicine has changed so very much just in my lifetime. The idea of of uh, going to the doctor or going to the hospital, getting your treatment, paying your bill, having a manageable cost in front of you, having a relationship with your medical staff. I, I, just listening yeah. to what you're talking, a bunch of strangers making arbitrary decisions, putting your child in danger, even though you come with insurance, prepared to pay for the treatment. Um, I, I'm, Man, it's just, Donna, it's just wrong. We should not be just subject to, uh, uh, you know, policies and procedures. It's the medical no. profession. It's life and death, and that's what it should be about. Right. Wow. Definitely. Thank you for sharing that. I've got Dr. Thank Burns uh, name okay. and information here, too. We'll see if we maybe we can get him on, because I would love somebody more uh, closely associated with that situation to, to be a guest and, and and maybe fill me in a bit more. I just There's got to be more of that story. Got to be more. Nothing on the surface makes sense. Nothing on the surface justifies sentencing a two-year-old child to death. 844-TALK-989. 844-825-5989. Let's take the final break. 14 away from 7. This is Chuck Douglas Radio.